Hello everyone, I'm back and uh, so I have disassembled uh, the uh, 17 inches monitor that I showed you in the previous video so it's a huge monitor because it's CRT uh, so this is the case of it it is a bit damaged so I will see if I can show you that so there, there was a big crack here in the grill um, not sure if it is actually uh, focusing and you're able to see it but there is a huge crack here that I'm actually able to put it back up it was actually all the way down and uh, some minor cracks all over this area so it's not very noticeable which is good but uh, it will require some work so I will actually use some uh, epoxy to bind this plastic back together and uh, since this is a very heavy monitor it has to be done properly otherwise this will crack again and more importantly like uh, if it's not done in a proper way there is the chance also like some hazard that can be happening because of you know the high voltages and everything so the case must be uh, integral or uh, something bad could happen and uh, I will first clean everything up so as you can see there is uh, a lot of uh, grime uh, accumulated in this so there's uh, it, it doesn't look clean it, it doesn't look bad but uh, it needs proper cleaning so I'm going to do that now uh, after cleaning it up I will prepare the epoxy and I will start the gluing process on the, uh, the deteriorated plastic here so my idea is actually to do it from the inside so the epoxy is not going to show uh, I'll do my best, not sure how uh, well this uh, will actually be because I've never done such a job before so let's see how it takes and uh, we go from there okay so I'm not going to film me you know like washing this because it's just a waste of time I'm just going to wash it thoroughly and uh, when I'm get back to the epoxy part then I will uh, film it because I think it's kind of interesting and maybe you guys could see uh, all the problems and uh, the challenges in doing something like that with a plastic that is that old so this monitor is from 92 if I'm not mistaken so we are talking about um, almost 20 years old uh, piece of hardware and uh, very heavy one so this plastic has been beaten up quite a lot there is also some work that I will have to be doing in the, in the actual internal components um, for example the metal shielding seems to be um, bended for some reason which is kind of weird because everything else looks fine uh, I'm not even sure whether or not this monitor is actually working uh, I will have to actually test it up uh, the guy that sold it to me told me that uh, it was everything was working but uh, I haven't tested it so I'm first going to basically work on the outside and then uh, go to the inside and uh, after I finish with the cleaning process and uh, then I will start testing everything making sure everything is okay before we assemble everything back right so we start with the monitor then I will move on to the CPU and uh, I will try to record so that you guys can see the progress okay I'm not intending to do any retro writing here it's just because it doesn't look too yellow anyways uh, so I'm not gonna do it it's just basically going to be a thorough cleaning uh, deep cleaning and uh, maybe some repair on the plastics and uh, some gluing and that's pretty much it like uh, I have to check the components on the CPU as well, I'm not sure whether or not there will be the need to replace caps and such. If there is, I will be or trying to document that as well. So I finished cleaning up, it's, uh, it's looking so much better now. Uh, just a tip, what I always use is this uh, magic eraser thing. It really works well with uh, this white sort of plastic. But the cleaning also um, brought up the places I will have to be working in terms of cracks. So there is, as you can see, like a lot of dents, you see, are missing. And uh, 
this basically like uh, is a problem so I will basically be filling those gaps here with uh, 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 with epoxy sorry there is a big crack here not sure if uh, it can be seen yeah now you see like it's already in place but it's a big crack it goes all the way here so I have to work this with epoxy as well and uh, the problem with the dents, uh, you know, the, the little uh, teeth that are missing, it goes everywhere. So on top here it looks great, but here we have some problem with those teeth as well, you see? Like lots of them are missing, which means I will have to reinforce those with epoxy, otherwise they will break eventually. And uh, again, because of the weight of this monitor, um, it is imperative that I actually make this uh, very reinforced, otherwise I will have big problems. Uh, more teeth missing here, and here, and here. And there was a big crack somewhere else, I just have to remind myself where it is. Maybe it's in the other side. So, yeah, I think it's actually in the back here. Yeah, there. So this is the big crack that I mentioned before. You see, now you can see it. Uh, this whole thing here, this whole section was all the way down, which means all the teeth here are basically broken down. So I will have to reinforce this whole thing here. This will, of course, affect the capacity of the monitor to uh, you know cool down this is those are the like the vents uh, elements but uh, it's not a big deal because I'm not gonna keep those some this monitor on like uh, for hours and hours anyways like it was in the past when this was built right like back in 92 uh, maybe people were using those Macs for servers or whatever but uh, now it's only like for fun so I'm not really worried about it so I am going to cover those with epoxy make this uh, very strong and uh, yeah that's basically the next step now so I have mixed uh, the epoxy this is the epoxy I, I'm using uh, this is the first time I'm going to use this uh, type of epoxy for you know like repairing plastics uh, I have used this for other jobs before um, this one actually uh, it cures into a uh, almost like a completely transparent plastic, which is good. It's not gonna show up much. So this is the epoxy uh, mixed. It's just curing now a little bit before I start applying it to the plastic. So I have to wait it for it to be a little um, more uh, consistent. So I can start applying that to the monitor and um, we go from there. Okay, so uh, the epoxy is almost in the right, uh, as you can see here, it's almost right, still a little soft, so I need to wait a little bit more, but it's almost done in terms of the consistency, and uh, I'm going to show you how I prepare the case so basically what I've done is all the points that got cracks on it I put some tape I'm not sure so my finger here has a uh, place with the tape so it's like uh, I didn't have masking tape so I'm just using like uh, regular tape and um, so the idea basically is uh, I'm going to pour a little bit of uh, epoxy from the other side and um, hopefully the consistency is going to be thick enough so that it doesn't um, it doesn't it stick in place basically so yeah and uh, I'm going to start maybe with uh, yeah the, the top which is basically this part here it is going to be a little bit tough to see the 
the masking tape, but I do have this flashlight here that hopefully is going to help me seeing the spots that needs fixing. Yeah, it's going to be really tough, you know, to see this the way I, it is right now. So, yeah, let's wait for the epoxy to cure a little bit more and uh, I'll be back. So the consistency now, it's pretty much what I wanted. Still going to take a while for for it to fully cure. But you see that it's very transparent. So yeah, it's still like, I want this to be still a little more consistent so it doesn't go through yeah maybe I should start with this the way it is right now so let's see so I'll start here a good dose of epoxy just here it's a lot of cracks there hopefully the the tape is going to be enough to keep the epoxy where it should. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, it's looking okay, but the problem is I don't get to see how the other side is. That might be the problem. So I made a lot. So I don't have to save up. I can just keep using this as much as I need. Okay, so not sure if uh, you can see, but so that's how it looks like right here. So the epoxy is going to basically cure and it's going to become like a hard plastic and hopefully this will be enough to uh, toughen up this case. So here is where that big crack was, so I'm trying to fill the gaps here. Since this is from the inside, it doesn't have to be beautiful, nobody's going to see it. You just have to be strong. Then here, you have to make sure that the epoxy binds with the plastic otherwise like uh, it's not going to create a strong bond and of course if it doesn't this whole work is for nothing okay Yeah, epoxy is great. And the great thing is that it settles down and uh, it fills up all, all the gaps, all of it. And it fills up really nicely. So I think I might need to wait the epoxy to cure uh, a little bit more because I still sense that it's too, the consistency is not what I would like. I want it to be more like a paste of sorts. But, yeah, I can go with this. 
It's very difficult to see the cracks, but I can see some of them. I don't want to go through all this work. I wanted to later on figure out that I forgot some few cracks and uh, plastic is basically not good in those sections. Okay, so this part here, I think it's okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to use the flashlight now to make sure I covered all the cracked stuff. So maybe in the back here, I can see a few more cracks. So I will have to fill this out. And this side, it doesn't look that bad. Well, we do have a crack here. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this is actually like a, a tooth that fall here. And I think I saw some more cracks. Let me see. The problem with epoxy now is that the process of curing it starts to accelerate and then you have to work a little bit faster because otherwise it, it is going to toughen up and it, it becomes unusable. So you have to work kind of fast. And this is only the bottom. Like I still have a lot of other portions to cover. Okay, so I think for this, yeah, there's a big crack here. Yeah, using gloves is really important. It is going to become messy. Okay. I will probably edit this video later on. This is like a microsurgery, you see? It's a problem with old computers. The old plastic becomes so brittle, so fragile. Okay, I think this section here is kind of okay. I can go back to it later on if I still have some working epoxy. So, the problem now is, if I move this, probably the epoxy is going to start shifting around. And I can't do it on the other sides the way it is right now. Because if I do it, it will fall down. So, I think I'll have to wait a little bit. Let me just see. Yeah. Apparently, the only place that I I didn't put, you see here, that uh, I forgot to put the tape here. So I'm going to do this now. While I still have time, the box is not hardened. Hasn't hardened yet. And, yeah, that's apparently the only place. And here. Yeah. And there is a bit here. It's just to avoid it to slip down. Okay, that's good enough. Apparently, it is sticking nicely. 
So I'm just going to wait like a few more minutes and move to the other side. So basically this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm not going to film every single side. The process just repeats itself. I'm just filling out, you know, the, uh, the cracks and the holes with epoxy, waiting for it to uh, cure it a little bit and then moving to the other, to the other section. And uh, I'm going to actually uh, go and do the other the other portions of it. Uh, this is a good uh, a good tip tip that I have for you. Uh, whenever dealing with epoxy, always keep you know like a rug with uh, rubbing alcohol, because if it um, it falls into the case or something like that, rubbing alcohol can get rid of it very very fast. So just have it. Okay, so I'm going to stop the recording now. I'm going to keep working on it and then I'm going to come back and show you tomorrow the finishing result. Okay, so I finished, uh, well, finished repairing the case. The curing of the epoxy is not 100% done yet, but we can already see the results. I would say the results look very nice. So this here was that huge crack. It is already like cured in this part here. It seems very solid. Of course, it shows that has been repaired, but well, it's not be really a biggie, especially because of um, the state the case was. Very, very uh, cracked and fragile. Now it looks much, much stronger and resilient. So this here, as you can see, let me see if I can get a better image. So you can see the fills, uh, the filling with uh, the epoxy. Again, it's not 100% cure, so it's still like a little, a little sticky to the touch. It will, of course, get uh, when 100% cured. It's going to look like this here. So this is already 100% cured, and I can put my finger, and it really looks like a smooth plastic. So, of course, it's reflecting the light the way it is right now. Uh, but uh, since this is transparent epoxy, it really doesn't look that bad. And uh, I think this was a successful repair. Like, even though it doesn't look great, it is, uh, the intention was to make the case stronger, and that successfully accomplished that. I'm not going to show all the other, you know, like, feelings, but uh, it's pretty much the same to all of them. So yeah, it looks it looks right. It looks great. I have also took the chance to repair this edge here. It was uh, cracked as well. Well, it is cracked, and I also used some epoxy trying to fill this. I'm not going to remove this because I think the epoxy hasn't fully dry yet. It apparently hasn't. But uh, yeah, as soon as it is, I'm going to remove this tape and see the result. But uh, yeah, hopefully it's going to look a little bit better. And that's pretty much it like for the case. I also use um, epoxy to fix the CD tray bezel that was loose because uh, one of the tabs was uh, basically broken. So I use epoxy also to put that in place. So it's still again like curing, so I'm going to wait for at least another 24 hours before I consider this to be uh, done. I still have to work on the base of the monitor. So the, this monitor has this um, different base where you have uh, some ADB ports actually connected to it. And uh, for some reason, I'm not able to turn the base. So it seems like it is stuck. So I have to actually look up, look it up on the internet, trying to figure out uh, what could be the cause of that? This is the cage, the electrostatic cage, or the, the, the shield actually, that I mentioned before. And uh, strangely enough, there is a huge dent on the other side here. And uh, I don't know what happened here, you see? So this dent was inside, of course, of the monitor. And uh, interestingly enough, like the, the plastic case didn't show any signs of, uh, you know, breakings or anything like that. So it is strange to have a dent this big in the, uh, 
in the metal cage without you know like um, affecting the plastics and the monitor and also the monitor itself doesn't seem to be broken down or anything like this like uh, it looks okay like nothing exploded or anything like that which is also weird so no idea what happened here you know to cause this big dent to show up uh, if someone had dropped the monitor at some point uh, for sure this cage um, this case here will be destroyed so I have no clue anyways I'm going to try to uh, correct that bend and uh, reassemble the monitor of course I'm going to clean it up before it's not that bad but it isn't that great either in terms of uh, uh, dust you see that it doesn't look that great but uh, it's just like dusting this off uh, reassembling the cage, the metal cage or shield and uh, and then I'm going to of course put back the uh, the plastic case here that I have repaired and that will be it for this particular monitor after that hopefully it's going to be fully functional and uh, ready to go so it's going to look like new well almost that's it so um, after I finish working with those I will focus my attention on the tower itself so probably just some cleaning has to be done here replacing the battery of course and uh, and that's that should be it one thing that I wanted to do is um, I have a 6100 here right just there underneath uh, the plastic there there is a 6100 that has that uh, DOS compatibility card and uh, the problem is uh, those uh, cards they tend to heat up very very uh, fast and the 6100 has a terrible uh, ventilation system and uh, normally what happens is because the DOS card sits right on top of the Motorola CPU uh, sorry not Motorola this is a power PC on the power PC CPU on this one this guy so uh, the heat is sometimes unbearable and the machine just uh, it shuts it down it never happened to me but it, it's uh, widely documented on the internet and it is a big issue with the 6100 with that particular card. Uh, I was considering maybe moving this card onto this tower here and see what happens. Like I read on the internet, this might be doable because this guy has three Nubus, Nubus um, slots, which is what the DOS card is. So it could work. I'm not entirely sure. I would try that out, maybe. And uh, if that sticks, I might replace this 6100 with this 8100 here and uh, use that as my vintage Mac, basically. So yeah, in terms of Mac, so I have this guy, I have this 6100, I have uh, now this 8100 here. And uh, what else? I have this G4 here, which is uh, running OS X and uh well that's pretty much it in terms of macs oh yes and i have this uh mac plus here as well so those are my my macs that i use uh well this is part of my collection i have uh in the garage i have uh 15400 which is for sale and i have um a performa 40 yeah it's a performance 460 that is there as well need uh, is seen it for some work but it's there i just don't have any place to put those guys here right and uh yeah that is uh 8100 tower is going to be probably sitting just ne next that uh, pentium pc there so i do have some space here uh, i'm not sure if i want to replace this sony trinitron monitor with the one that i am repairing here it might be a thing it's just that this guy has two ports, uh, two VGA ports, and I'm actually using both. Like one is connecting to the Z ZX Spectrum that is uh, in this drawer down below here, and the other is connecting to the Mac itself. So if I if I lose this monitor here, replace it with the Mac one, uh, I will lose that port, 
which means like the Z axis spectrum here is, uh, is going to have to be connected somewhere else. Not a big deal, but uh, yeah, when you are like uh, you don't have a lot of space, uh, then this makes all the difference. So I have to think about it and see what uh, what I'm going to do. The problem is this monitor looks great. Like it is a Trinitron as well, 17 inches, and uh, it just like looks great. And uh, yeah, I might use it here, I replace this Sony with this one, and eventually you know sell this Sony Trinitron here, which is a great monitor. Let's see. That's it for today, guys. Uh, stick with me as I progress in the refurbish of this 8100. As soon as it's um, ready to go, I will go back and document it.